Satan's usury or God's dividend? Your choice. Jesus said that heaven is just like hell, except no loan sharking. In the Our Father, he says, let it be done the Father's will on earth as it is in heaven. So, how is money run in heaven? In the parable of the talents, he says the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he describes where a loan shark makes everybody pay 100% interest, one servant gives him back his principal, stiffs him for his interest, gets thumped out, thrown in the alley where men weep and gnash their teeth. And in the parable of the Minas, again, the master wants his interest and the <clears throat> servant gives him his principal, <clears throat> stiffs him for his interest, and the master says, slay him in front of me, because in the old days, if you lost your deaf gamble, they could take you and they could work you to death in a galley in two years, or they could send you to a gold mine and work you to death in six months. So why would Jesus say that the kingdom of heaven is like the kingdom of the loan shark? Because it is. Get rid of the loan sharking and this planet's a heaven. It's only the loan sharking and the debts that are harassing mankind. I wrote a poem in my Bible poem, What Heaven Is. If you were to be asked what for you would be heavenly, there'd be no executions and no alleys, certainly. There would be lots of food and drink, some clothing and a home, a razor and some shaving cream, a toothbrush and a comb. If you had also trappings of a great technology, all the tools and gadgets that use electricity, communications, education, entertainment, wealth, a staff of competent physicians watching over health, most labor that is tedious is done by robots who release you to explore the universe God made for you. Still, you have to pay for it in heaven. Because Isaiah 55 said, he specifies, the way to answer when you hear the sound of needy cries. All you who have no money and are hungry still may come and buy the food we have so you may eat your fill. And you who have no money and clad insufficiently do come and buy some clothing so that warmly dressed you'll be. Obviously, lending is no problem. And collecting is no problem. It's only the usury that turns heaven into a hell. So, what would happen on the day of jubilation when the Father's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Well, Jesus said in that day, no one's going to be chasing you for debts. You're not going to be chasing anybody for debts. You're going to have tomorrow's food. And that's easily done by being able to open an account at, in Canada, the Bank of Canada's computer, or at the United Nations, the Unilet's computer, whatever. Open up a time bank account, cut checks to settle all your interest bearing debts and your mortgages and anybody you ever owed and everybody you had to stiff and you'd like to settle up. You start cutting all these checks and get one stable number. And after that, all payments to the sugar daddy bank in the sky go against principal. And eventually, someday, you're going to get out of debt. But you'll also start getting payments in your account emailed to you by many people who had to stiff you, rob you, whatever reason, so that there'll be a general cancellation. Now, if you go to YouTube videos at my channel, King of the Poppers, and you look for Argentina two years early, it'll explain how when people have a lot of interest-free money in their pockets and they can't get interest at the bank, what do they do with it? Well, they pay off all their debts right away. And there's a general cancellation of internal debt, which frees up all federal currency to pay off external debts, which is how Argentina paid off their IMF World Bank external debt two years early. The key was a lot of community currency in circulation that nullified all the internal debt. So what would happen? Well, unions would immediately be able to pool the credit lines of their employees and buy all the shares in their corporations. And the rich people, with the owners, would be paid, get their value in money that's going to be stable. And the producers are going to be the ones who are going to profit from their enterprise. No more parasites collecting ownership fees. So, that's the basic perfect blend of capitalism and communism. When everybody gets to be a capitalist because everybody's got a credit card to get in the game and pool their resources in that way. The marketplace has been explained. You, you want a job, all you have to do is log on, look at the e-marketplace where they're offering all sorts of jobs at different rates per hour. The minimum is a child hour of labor and everything else is multiplied accordingly. And just like Boy Scouts, the more things you qualify for, the more hours per hour you can earn. So 
so that most young men would in their youth get their fire fighting badges and be able to help out in a fire anywhere or a forest fire anyway when called on. And if they happen to be working in a restaurant that time when the forest fire hits, someone else will leave whatever they're doing and move into that slot because they're qualified while he goes off to fight the forest fire for a couple of weeks. So a very efficient pooling of manpower. Now, it also eliminates the gamble. You got our my buddy, not so quick Herbie, and he decided he was going to make some uh, two-tone lime and pink wingtip shoes. And so he puts his hat on a net and says, I want to make two-tone lime and pink wingtip shoes. Anybody want some? No response. So he doesn't take a losing death gamble by borrowing, spending to produce, inflating his price and losing. Instead, he says, somebody says, hey, change it to black and white. Maybe some old timers will like that. So he, it's not so quick, Herbie puts in two-tone black and white shoes. And pretty soon he's got bzz, 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 800 orders. Now he can go to the credit system and say, I want this much leather, this much paint, this much that, because I got a market up front. No more losing death gambles, only winning gambles. So that's an easy way for everybody to be able to participate once the e-market is here. And the more badges you get, well, the more you earn per hour. And the best thing of all is that right now, probably 80% of humanity is involved in wasted, useless things. And only 20% actually build and do things. So that, let's say all the poor people, the victims in the 80%, in some countries, 50, 60% unemployed. And then you got all the prosecutors and all the caregivers for all those victims out there. There may be with judges and police and to keep them down, there could be 80% of the population who are wasting their time in poverty and idleness and controlling poverty and imposing poverty and 20% of the people working. Imagine now that all these people doing the useless stuff don't have anybody to chase because who's going to do a crime when you've got an interest-free credit card and a chance to go grab all sorts of jobs? So that all of that wasted enterprise and insurance companies, all these people can go home, stay there, Take a course, retrain, get into something useful. So what if we can divert mankind from 20% useful power and 80% in the wrong direction or wasted into 100% useful power in controlling and improving things? Well, if you look at the Zeitgeist Addendum movie, they point out how the energy, the clean energy is available could have us all living in energy wealth. And the only thing lacking is the money to finance clean energy because cheap, dirty stuff is all we can afford because we're short of money. Well, you would have wind, uh, solar, tidal, all these different energies possible if we could afford them. And now, without 80% of humanity wasting your time doing nothing useful, we can't afford to all throw in an extra hour to make sure we have clean energy. And we can de decommission nuclear, which is stupid because it's so dangerous. We just don't need something this dirty and dangerous around when we can have perfectly clean, and especially if we now cut back. We're not shipping our tomatoes overseas. They're not shipping their tomatoes here. And we're not trying to export our surpluses of steel there. They're not shipping their surplus steal here. That insane competition of death gamble to try and export what the home market can't buy ends. So all that wasted energy now doesn't get wasted anymore. So with everybody cutting back, no more going to work, all these judges and lawyers and people who do nothing. You judges can become referees at badminton games or whatever, but it's going to be a whole new world when everyone's got a chance to do something useful and get paid properly for it. The difference is we want to ask you to take God's dividend instead of Satan's usury. Right now, most people are protesting and picketing for and striking for more money for their food. When they could be striking for more food for their money. Now, that takes a paradigm shift to understand. But some kid comes up to you and you knit him a sweater or you produced a sweater. And, he's, and you charge him a one-hour bill for the sweater. 30 years later, you come back to the kid and you say, Hey, kid, here's your one-hour bill. I won't give me my sweater back now. He says, Guess what, sir? I got better technology. Here's three sweaters for your hour. So, with an interest-free money, your money will start to buy you more and more stuff as technology gets better, which is logical. I call this God's dividend. Now, you can choose Satan's usury. I want more money for my food. I'm going to strike for more money for my food. Instead of God's dividend, I want more food for my money. And that's what's going to happen when we stabilize and get rid of usury. 
over time your hour is going to buy you more and more stuff so instead of hoping that you're going to get more money to retire with you're going to find that your money keeps buying you more and more and it gets depleted less and less so that everybody does end up pretty rich so without the usury going to the loan sharks who don't need it there's enough to go around and keep us all in comfortable wealth and that's the beauty of the Zeitgeist Addendum movie, as it explains how the Federal Reserve banking system is dragging our industrial entrepreneurship down. And they do point out there's only the principal and not the principal plus the interest. But if they didn't do the final derivation of the miracle equation, that I over P plus I get knocked out into unemployment and foreclosure and shift B inflation. So they're almost there. And when they do, millions will now decide, hey, let's give up on Satan's usury and let's accept God's dividend. And that's the answer to mankind's salvation. So what are you going to do?